Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set and adjust the float height on your carburetor. Checking and adjusting your float height is gonna be a similar process on just about any carburetor, whether it's for a street bike, dirt bike, ATV, or side-by-side, -side. it's simple to do. And a lot of times, you're not gonna to have to make any adjustment to that float height, but if the float height is off, the machine is not gonna run right, and you're gonna to have to take that back off and go through all that work again. So it's better just to do it while you're in here. Now, if you need to know how to clean your carburetor, or if you need to know about theory, we do have videos on that, so be sure to check them out. But for now, we're just focused on the float height, so let's get started. To make sure you're getting the correct measurement, you need to make sure your parts are in good condition. So this float valve right here, or needle, whatever you wanna call it, you have a plunger on the end. You wanna make sure that goes all the way down and then springs back out on its own. If it just stays down there or if the spring feels weak, you wanna replace this. Now. On the other side, on this rubber tip, if you see a groove worn into that, this is gonna make the float sit a little bit lower and your height's gonna be off. And most likely it's gonna be leaking as well. So if that happened to it, again, you're gonna to wanna to replace it. And then look at the brass fitting where this sits, make sure there's no damage there. If all that's good, then you can go ahead and look at the float itself. Now on the float, a lot of times you're gonna have this metal arm attached to both floats. And this middle tab, a lot of times the stock setting is gonna be pretty much parallel with these two sides. If it's up or down in there, it's gonna change that float height. So that's a good indicator. If it's very far down or very far up, then somebody probably messed with it and it might need to be corrected. The other thing you're gonna run into, sometimes these are all plastic and in that case, you're not gonna be able to adjust this. And if your float valve is leaking, then your only option would be to replace that. Now it's not as common to have a, an all brass float anymore, but sometimes you can get a leak in there and the gas actually goes inside that float and then weighs it down, causing a rich mixture. Before we measure the float height, we need to have the float in the correct position. So you'll notice as this just sits there, the float is all the way down. And as I rock it up, eventually, it's gonna come down and stop right there. But if I go even further, it's gonna sit all the way down in there. And that's gonna be the wrong measurement. So what we're trying to do is have the float right where it stops here. And all that is, there's that plunger we showed you earlier on the end of that float valve. And this tab on the float is gonna sit on that. And when that lightly seats, that is the correct spot to check the float height. Now, just to give you guys a closer look of what's actually going on, this float is actually just barely touching the plunger on the end of the float valve. That's exactly what you want. If this thing is all the way upside down, it's just gonna push down on the plunger and you're gonna get the wrong reading. So you wanna let this sit exactly where it barely comes into contact with that plunger on that float valve. Now that you know how to get the float in the correct spot, you need to know the measurement that's gonna be found in your service manual. And on this carburetor, it's seven and a half millimeters from the ceiling surface on the carburetor body to the highest point on that float when it's in the correct spot. And sometimes on these bodies, you'll have a little lip on the edge. Just make sure you're not going from the lip, make sure you're actually going from that ceiling surface with the gasket removed. Now to actually take your measurement, we're going to show you three different ways. The first way is going to be the easiest way. This is the Bike Master float level gauge, and you can adjust it for the width of the carburetor right here. And then your float height is going to be set by moving this arm. And for us, you know, we're just going seven and a half millimeters. So we'll set that right at seven and a half. And now we can take our measurement. So again, to take the right measurement, I'm just gonna press down on the float, make sure everything's in the correct spot. The plunger is coming back all the way on its own. So I'm gonna take the gauge and we'll measure the highest point of that float. And this one is actually a little low. So with this float in that position, it's actually gonna cause a slightly rich running condition. And if it's off a lot more, it's gonna exaggerate that. The other thing that can happen if if this is sitting all the way out, 
that's going to cause a lean running condition. So that's when you're going to have to adjust that tang. And to do that, all we need to do is press in on it a little bit and it shouldn't take a lot of force. We're just using a flat blade screwdriver. We'll make small adjustments so it doesn't get way off. So with it right there, it is barely touching our gauge so we know it's in the right spot. Now, this is what that lean condition is gonna look like. You have the float in the correct spot and our gauge set up correctly. We'll press this down and that highest point actually pushes on the float. So that's how you know you're gonna to be too lean and you definitely wanna get that adjusted to the correct spot. And in this case, you're just gonna lift up on that tang with a small screwdriver. You can work it from both sides. Just be careful you don't damage anything while you're doing this. So we still need to adjust it a little more. You'll keep adjusting until it's in the correct spot. The next carburetor we're gonna show you, we're gonna use a digital caliper to measure the float height. And the reason we can do that is the float has a nice square edge to it. Now, this carburetor is different. It came off a V-twin motorcycle. And a lot of people say that these float arms, they're always gonna be parallel with this carburetor body, but that's not always the case. That's why it's so important to take the measurement and use the spec that's in your book. So to take the measurement on this carburetor, all we need to do is set the digital caliper to our specification. Now to check the float height with the digital caliper, you need to set this to the correct depth. Then we're gonna use the depth gauge at the bottom. And all you need to do is set the gauge against the carburetor body. And if that corner presses down on the float, or if there's a gap between the float and that corner, then you need to make adjustments until the float height is in spec. And again, you're going to the highest point on that float, so you might need to move this back and forth just a little bit just to make sure. The last way to check a float height is by checking the fuel height. Now, this is the least common way to check the float height, but to do this, all you need to do is have a clear hose. You're gonna hook it up to the drain on the float bowl, and then you're gonna open that screw let the fuel come in and the fuel is either gonna be above or below the seam on that float bowl and your manual will give you the spec for that. Now we're just gonna hook this up to an auxiliary fuel tank and show you how to do it. So you can see this one's just below that line and again, you're gonna to need to check your manual. Sometimes it might be above that line. And that's all there is to checking and adjusting your carburetor float height. If you need either of these tools or any rebuild parts for your carburetor, be sure to get those on our website and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. Thanks for watching.